Fields. He did really well today. But if you're some of the things that you know that you're going to count as a potential weakness or a fault, you're probably not going to see in this kind of setting. Yeah, look, we can, and we get to that, Rhett. Ohio on this Passive Draft Pro Day special presented by Verizon Buckeye Pro Day there on the campus of Ohio State and a look at Daniel Jeremiah's number eight overall prospect, Justin Fields, live in his throwing session. Rhett Lewis, DJ here with you. I've already seen Mac Jones in his second throwing session of this Pro Day season earlier today, and now it's Fields' turn to kind of complete the puzzle with these high-level prospects, DJ. Yeah, we've got the same person running this workout that ran the Zach Wilson workout. You're talking about John Beck, former quarterback out of BYU. And I believe the, the plan today is, again, highlight some of the movement stuff. We've talked about that with Mac Jones earlier. But in talking to John, he wanted to show the ability of Fields to be able to work in more confined space. So he said he's going to have a bag. He's going to try and it. close that space down a little bit. And that ball is coming out hot. Certainly some velocity. No lack for that with Fields. We've already seen his athletic ability with the 40-yard dash in the 4-4 range. Again, thought he might get down into the 4-3s, but in the end, 4-4 is plenty fast. Go back to our first time seeing Justin Fields as a high schooler when we were up there at the opening for the All-American uh, event that they had there in Portland. And remember, it came down to him and Trevor Lawrence was kind of the talk there. Both these kids out of Atlanta or out of Georgia. and 20 minutes away from each other. Getting a chance yeah. to see him then go out and compete at that event. Fields ended up winning. They ended up winning the MVP of the entire event. His team and, won. And here he goes and, and matches up with Lawrence in the postseason for two years, and now he's going to get a chance to be in the same draft class. So uh, yeah. interesting to tie those two together. Yeah, also interesting that after that event, uh, it was Justin Fields who kind of jumped above Trevor Lawrence if you follow recruiting rankings, if that matters to you at all, uh, in the end, which was kind of interesting. Of course, went to Georgia, transferred to Ohio State, where he has clearly made a name for himself. Aditi Kinkawala is live for us in Columbus as we watch this Justin Fields throwing session there at Buckeye Pro Day. Aditi? understand you've got a special guest there with I, you. I do, in fact, Red. I'm standing right next to Coach Ryan Day, who was rocking on his feet a minute ago, but now he <laughs> looks cool as a cucumber. What, how are you feeling about this right now, and what are you most excited about Justin showing today? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's you know, a lot of these guys want to see what it looks like in person to see uh, the ball come out of his hand, and, you know, these guys are going to be really, really impressed. Uh, he's very, very accurate with the ball, um, and, you know, Anytime you're in a situation like this, you know, it's it's kind of an awkward scene, you know. I mean, it's really quiet. There's, you know, probably a couple hundred people in here, and <laughs> you could hear a pin drop, and so it's always unique. Uh, but he's he's doing a great job. The ball's coming out of his hand. It's spinning really well, and, and uh, he'll, do, he'll do great today. So now we see him working with his quarterback's coach, John Beck, on this script, the 65-throw script today. Do you have a lot of input in what you think he needs to show NFL personnel? No, I kind of let them handle that. You know, there's there's all kinds of different things you can do. But uh, at the end of the day, these guys, you know, they have a body of work and they've seen him play in games and they see his game film. That's That speaks for itself. I mean, this is just routes on air. I mean, there's no defenders out there. They don't even wear pads on, you know. But it, what what is it really? It's just trying to get a feel for seeing him move, seeing the ball come out of his hands, how the ball spins, you know. And, and over time, as a quarterback coach, you kind of have an idea of what you like. Right. There have been some questions about how good he is at going to his first read. When you see that, does that irritate you? I no, mean, if the first read is always open, what yeah. else is he supposed to do? I mean, everybody has their own opinion on stuff. And, you know, some people, you know, watch a lot of film and, and make opinions on their own based on the film. And then other guys just kind of repeat what other people say, you know. And so uh, I appreciate the people who really watch film. And, um, you know, I think if you watch the Clemson game, there's two different times where he's getting to the fifth read and the progression and, and checking the ball down. And um, so if you really go through it and watch it, then you, you know you create opinion for yourself. I think some guys just kind of watch a couple clips of film and then make a uh, categorization of somebody. The one thing about quarterback play is it's it's a process. It takes time, ebbs and flows. And, and the great ones, you know, they, they they have ups, they have downs, but they keep growing and they keep getting better. And that's that's the point. And this is a kid here who's competitively tough. He's intelligent. He has all the all the skill sets that you're looking for. What are some of the things that maybe you didn't necessarily do with him here that you are completely confident he could do on the next level? We do just about everything that they do at the next level. I mean, we, we line up on our center, we throw play action pass, we run RPOs, uh, we throw you know nakeds and, and boots on the on the perimeter. Um, I mean, just about everything we do here they do in the NFL. So 
Um, I don't think there's any question in terms of how does it carry over to the NFL, other than the fact that is he going to continually build because he's only, you know, really into his, I don't know, I guess you can call it his second year of being a quarterback because, you know, he really didn't play much at Georgia. And this year was, I guess, you know, two-thirds of a season. So the more games he plays, the more reps he gets under his belt, the better he's going to get. Okay, so you know him way better than any of us do. As you watch his body language here, what he's doing, what are you seeing? What can you tell us about him that we don't know? Uh, well, he's always he's always this way. Uh, he's very very <laughs> composed. He's poised, you know, and um, he you know he wants to do well. I mean, he's worked up. You know, he wants to do a great job, but uh, you'll never know it. You never see it with him. That's just the way he is. Uh, he doesn't get rattled very often, and um, but but quietly, competitively tough. You know, kind of internalizes it a little bit. Um, so he, he wants to do great, and he's going to be hard on himself. I'm sure if he ran 4-4, four, four, he wanted to run 4-2 or 4-3. That's just the way he is, and he's going to always be that way. All right, really quickly, I do have to send it back, but your one favorite thing about Justin? His toughness, his toughness. What, what, the two plays I go back to is the Team Up North game. He got hit on his knee. He comes in the next play, throws a touchdown pass in the rivalry game. This year he gets hit in the, in, on his hip, out for, I mean, just got absolutely whacked, out for a play and throws a touchdown pass to Crystal Lavi the next play. His competitive toughness is unlike any of I've ever been around. And look at that one right there. Accurate, <laughs> I'd say, right? Yeah, very accurate. Yeah. All right, DJ Rhett, thank you guys so much. The team up north. You all heard that, right? I'd say, <laughs> look, that's been a Ryan Day special since the moment he took over as the head coach at Ohio State. Uh, Aditi Kinkawala there with Ryan Day. Thanks so much to Coach for lending some of his time to us during this throwing session from his quarterback the last two years. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year the last two years. Justin Fields guided them to a national championship game. You saw Coach Day kind of talking about some of the outside narratives about sure. Justin Fields and, uh, you know, indicating, you know, likes to hear from people who have watched the tape. You are one of those guys who watched the tape. In fact, you and I both watched the national championship game again this morning before uh, this Justin Fields workout. And what did you learn about the narrative that Fields is a one-read guy? I don't agree with it. To me, there's, look, there's examples, especially if you go back to 2019, where I can show you some plays where he gets hung on number one a little bit. He hangs on there a little bit too long instead of, instead of moving on from him. But then I can show you a ton of tape where his eyes are, are moving from one to two to three consistently. My issue was not, not really getting hung up on one. It was then being able to pull the trigger once you see it, once you get to number two or number three, to just let it rip, to trust it and let it rip. Yeah. Now, when you do more homework and you talk to people around Ohio State, there's a lot of read routes that they run in that offense, which requires him and the wideout to be on the same page and see the same thing. So that can lead to him holding the ball sometimes, which has, has led to some sacks in different things. So the, the more homework you do, you dig on it, and, and you feel more comfortable with the situation. I, I definitely have seen his eyes work quickly. Yeah. Then it's just a matter of just pulling the trigger and let it rip. You know, I think a lot of people in that narrative you know, camp talk about the Indiana game where he threw three picks, talk about the Northwestern game where he threw two picks, which are almost double what he threw his entire first season as a starter at Ohio State. And, and then on the other side, you talk about, well, he had the game of his life against Clemson in the semifinal where he threw six touchdowns in that win after getting that huge hit from Skalski of, of Clemson uh, that knocked him down for a second. But I think that just as impressive was the game against Alabama. Yeah, you're right. We sat and watched game. that again this morning. I would put that Alabama National Championship game tape up against the Clemson tape. He played his best two football games, in my opinion, those last two on that stage against quality competition. And Coach mentioned his toughness. Absolutely, that matters at the quarterback position. And his toughness, his competitive toughness, I think is the phrase that he used, yeah. um, is off the charts. So. I think if you're talking about ceilings for quarterbacks in this draft, I could make the argument that Fields has the highest ceiling of any of them. Sure. We're not near there yet. Trey Sermon catches the pass here from Justin Fields. I mean, again, with bodies flying all over him in a hostile environment in that national title game, he stood in there and Look, made some terrific throws. If the Ohio State defense could have picked up some stops, yeah. I mean, they, they were moving the, the ball and scoring yeah. points. They just couldn't get off the field defensively against that Alabama offense. But it is interesting watching these pro days back-to-back -back as we're watching Justin Fields just rip it here, comparing him with Mac Jones. It comes off the hand a little different with Justin Fields. You see the ball jump a little bit more. Yeah, I'll be curious to get some insight from some of the folks there uh, in person just to kind of double up on that and see how it felt watching it live right there. You see John Beck 
helping to run this workout. I mentioned uh, earlier before we began this workout that, you know, as Beck trains Zach Wilson as well. We saw him run the, the Wilson Pro Day. So having these two guys, Fields and Wilson, who trained together for the last few weeks here, kind of go, you know, blow for blow, compete a little bit during their training, and then to compete in these Pro Day performances, I think, is kind of a neat thing, too. And I, you know, look, this is a, a Pro Day workout that's going to be seen by Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. We know we saw them at Alabama today. They're not physically there at Ohio State, but they'll have video of this. And there's also talk they're going to try and set up additional pro days, I guess is how they're, they're labeling it, because you can't do private workouts. But you can encourage Justin Fields and Ohio State to do an additional pro day, which would then allow them to come in and see him. It wouldn't be right. private. It'd be open to other teams. Sure. But they would get an opportunity to see him up close. And that was, again, the, that was uh, one of the big notes, like, oh, Shanahan and Lynch are going to be in Tuscaloosa and not in Columbus on the day that both Mac Jones and Justin Fields are throwing. Well, they're going to figure this thing out. They're going to see all these guys that are in play. Number three. Again, the 49ers, 26.6% of their snaps were play action last year. I believe it was sixth or seventh in the league, way up there. So you're going to see in this workout with John Beck running it, a lot of play action. You think there's any pressure on the Atlanta Falcons? Rhett, at four. If he gets to four, here he is. He's local. Yep. He's got, as we can see with that throw right there, incredible, incredible tool set and ability. You've got Matt Ryan, but this isn't a decision for next year. This is a decision for the next decade plus, potentially. Exactly right. exactly and can you right. imagine watching Justin Fields go somewhere else and become a star when you had him sitting there right in your lap? That is a big rub here in these first four picks. And again, don't let the fact that Matt Ryan's there in Atlanta or that Jimmy Garoppolo's there in San Francisco as John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan keep telling us influence who you think or which quarterback you think they're going to take. Look, we saw the Packers take Jordan Love, okay? So let's not let's not pretend like, right. you know, that there's... Was that on your radar coming uh, in? I, I mean, I, I had well, mine. Uh, yeah, I had it in my in a mock draft, one of my 95 mock right. drafts, but I think I got bored. Um, that was a big time throw we just saw from Justin Fields, by the way. He's, you know, with quarterbacks, some guys are high effort throwers where it takes everything in their in their whole body to be able to generate velocity. He doesn't need it. And you're seeing it with them trying to close some of the space with the bag coming at him, trying to limit his foot space and his room. Another look at this. See, play see the bag action. so he doesn't he can't really get fully into it. And look at that thing. Look how the RPMs the ball spin. I uh, like that. He's, he's able to really juice it up. Another look, look at, at him bag. Yeah. going to the other side. Again, trying oh. to eliminate that space, a little fade away. Yeah, this is a solid kid, too. I mean, like, you can just look at it from the build, but again, be able to take a hit like he did at Clemson and stick in that game and still be able to, you know, to move around with the football and, and took his, put took, it where you want it. It was literally like like watching a boxer who's who's bled and it, yeah. it kind of takes their takes him to a whole nother level. I mean, he he, no he played he played here. unbelievable with the pain he must have been enduring. You saw it when he went off the sideline. So this is again this is what we saw at BYU. There's your Wilson. Yeah. yeah, and just I mean. To me, that looks just as good. Smiling, he's enjoying himself. Again, so many, uh, you know, really high-profile decision makers uh, there in Columbus to watch Justin Fields. We talked initially in this draft process about, you know, whether Urban Meyer with his Ohio State connections, even though he never really coached Justin Fields, he was gone before Fields became the starter there, whether they might consider Fields over Trevor Lawrence. That debate has kind of fizzled out a little bit here as you watch that seam throw from Fields. Uh, but Urban Meyer is there. By the way, Chase Young is also their number two overall pick last year and a, a phenomenal rookie season for the, for the Washington football team. You got Matt Rule there, head coach of the Carolina Panthers, as the Didi King of Walla told us. Panthers sitting there with the number eight pick. An interesting spot. And you got some 49ers representatives there. 
think there was even some thought before the trade was made that when the Eagles were at number six, that Justin Fields you know, could have been in play even there. with Jalen Hurts, even there. with Jalen Hurts, just because you'd say we have a higher grade on Fields, and so yeah. you know, look, Hurts is a, was a second round pick. If you feel like you've got you know, a better option at that position, then you would do it. Well, that all went away. They traded out, and I, I don't think there's any chance we'll see Fields get all the way down there to number twelve. How about that? A little mentor pro Current kind of former, yeah. yeah, former situation. Urban Meyer, new head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, first foray into the NFL world. He's got the number one overall pick. Certainly has the opportunity to take a Justin Fields. Not uh, as close to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, is that, <laughs> is that Olave? Lawrence. I'm wondering. If it does look like it. Yeah. I couldn't tell. That's surprised that Olave is not in this class. Thought for sure he hey, might that's consider coming. Ryan out. Day's already one and zero. They haven't yeah. played any games yet. Getting Chris Olave to come back to receiver school. in the Big Ten. I mean, Garrett Wilson formed one of the best wide receiver duos in the country last year. There's a lot of there running just uh, just past fields. So there's some some continuity there for him. These guys have certainly they, had some reps hooked, together. Yeah, they've hooked up a couple times. It almost drops that ball almost down to a three-quarter well, delivery. You there. can heal it. Yeah. You can hear the ball hit the hands. I mean, it's it's definitely coming in with some heat. It's a heck of a catch by Lovey. Already getting a, getting a head start on I the know. I, I the feel like this. I, I feel like I'm not allowed to do this. He's I shouldn't be watching open. him or paying attention. But I promise you that every scout in attendance there is a notebook that they're jotting down some Olave notes as well. Just in pencil, right? Yeah, not. I know. It's yeah. fine. We can go over it later. Ohio State, 14 players invited to the combine. Of course, all the invites went out like normal to the combine, uh, although you know we didn't have the in-person activities. Always well represented, both in terms of quantity and quality. Prospects uh, that get ready for the draft and to hear their name called early. This year, April 29th in Cleveland, Ohio. So great to get that we're going to have some of these prospects in person again after missing out on that aspect of it last year of course we'll still get some of the the live in cam in home reactions look at that throw that all the way seed. across the field from fields yeah and not much air on that one either that's a flat firm ball from justin fields and if you're looking you know comparisons i get it some people hate them teams i was with we always use them to provide context for the record i love them yeah i, I think it's well look in this thing too it gives you an image if you haven't seen a lot of ohio state player you haven't seen justin fields it kind of creates a little bit of a picture for you uh, but again, the, the three teams I worked with, we, we used them. So when I look at, at Justin Fields, say, okay, where's the comparison? For me, he's got Marcus Mariota's athleticism, but he's got Dak Prescott's build, build and sturdiness and toughness and all those things that he brings to the table. And, you know, Mariota, when he was coming out, ran 4 5 2. Fields ran 4 Real 4 faster. 3. Uh, they're similar in size. Mariota's an inch taller. He was 222 pounds. Fields, 227. But Dak Prescott, 6'2 and a quarter, 226. Field 6'2 and three quarters, 227. So body type wise. Right on the money. That that is who we that's who he is. But to me, it's just that that speed that he possesses, which is pretty rare, pretty unique. Quick little refresh, little rehydrate there for Justin Fields. Bring up another point inside that division yeah. with Atlanta. When you look at that division, Breeze just walked away. Brady. Tom Brady, we don't know. We assume a couple more years maybe. Assume at the most. 10, look at this yeah. throw. Nice ball. Um, and then you look at Carolina trying to find their guy you know, in, in this draft. So if you're Atlanta, Matt Ryan is going to be 36 in May, and you've got a chance to secure that guy going into the future. Man, that'd be awfully tough for me to pass up if I was in that position. Sure. New defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys, Dan Quinn, there just to the left of Mike McCarthy watching this deep ball tickle the rafters and come down in the bucket. I had a little Russell Wilson moon ball on it there. <laughs> He's got a little bit higher roof at Ohio State than they do I, at I Alabama. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Saw Mac Jones' throwing session earlier here on this Path to the Draft Pro Day special. 
Mac had one touch the, the lights of the pipes up there down in Tuscaloosa and drop behind his receiver. A little bit higher, a little more elevation on this indoor facility there in Columbus. I remember talking to him at that high school All-American event and thinking, it's just like talking to a 10-year pro when he sat down on the, the set with The maturity yeah. and the composure for a guy who, by the way, was about to go out and, and compete at the highest level, you know, against the highest level, you know, high school players going into their senior year. That was really interesting, man. No nerves. was just cool, calm. I just remember telling him, we'll see you in a couple of years. Like, it was no, there was oh, no yeah. doubt we'd be at this day. Urban Meyer, Ryan Day watching on. I wonder what that conversation's like between, you know, if Ryan Day's like, oh, I, know Tre I know Trevor's the golden boy over here, but like, <laughs> Justin's a pretty dang good player, remember? Let's give a little consideration here. He's gonna be coaching against him, right? That's, yeah, probably so. Probably so. One way or another, Urban Meyer might be asking questions about Tommy Togiai. Yeah, you know, who, knows, that, who knows what that, what that, what that conversation is. Or Baron Browning. Yeah. Or Pete Werner. Or Trey Sermon. He's a, four, a running back. 14 Jackson. guys from Ohio State would have been at the combine this year. Speaking of Trey Sermon, here he, he is on a little wheel route. Take that. Ball. And again, you're kind of getting some of that simulated pressure to close down the space, as we talked about. We, we saw that on tape in the national title game. He was closed was down impressed. quite a bit. Yeah, again, I, I would challenge you if you... You know, if you say, well, Clemson was the high watermark and that was as good as it got, when you really go back and study that national championship game of Alabama, I think he did some more impressive yeah. things in that game. It Don't really get was. distracted by the stat line or the scoreboard. And they Watch got the throws. Look at this one. Wow. Nice ball. Okay, okay, Justin. Stepping up here. This is, you know, what's kind of cool about this is it's, this is like, you know, one of the final QB you know, of that upper echelon that we're going to see. So he gets to kind of leave a lasting impression. Well, we feel like we haven't seen him in so long, yeah. right? I mean, Trevor, Trevor's workout feels like it was two years ago. Yeah. And to be fair to Kyle Trask, we're going to see him at Florida's Pro Day with Kyle Pitts and Kadarius Toney and that whole talented class tomorrow here on another Path to the Draft Pro Day special. But, I mean, right that now, is Fields is slinging it. corner post. Is that what we say? Yeah, give me a little bit of that. That's what I heard from the peanut gallery there. Maybe a request coming in. Again, we were expecting about 65 throws from Fields. Scripted at least. Got the word can, can, the we, uh, can we just get rid of another narrative that kind of bugs me a little bit with, with, with players? Please. Well, none of these Ohio State, Ohio State quarterbacks are any good, so you, you can't take Justin Fields because somebody else failed. You don't do that. You scout everybody individually. We can go through the list, and I can show you a position in a school where they've had good players and bad players, and you can't. Everybody's their own individual evaluation. That, yeah, that does I've not. I've never yeah. understood that argument. Yeah, and Didi uh, just texted, uh, said this is confirming that this is off script here, getting some. Some requests, some additional uh, bonus throws. It's like a jukebox. Remember those? I guess they don't Wait, have what? those anymore. <laughs> uh, B7. <laughs> All right, 2 o'clock Eastern time here on this Pats of the Draft Pro Day special presented by Verizon live with you from Columbus, Ohio. You are looking live at Daniel Jeremiah's number eight overall prospect, QB4 on the list, Justin Fields at the Ohio State Pro Day. Workout being run by John Beck. You see they're crouching right behind Fields off to his left. Got one of his receivers from this past season, Chris Olave running routes. Trey Sermon, one of the top Jeez. running backs. <laughs> yes, Justin Fields. Unleashing. I see you, Justin. Show off Another a move, bit. another throw on the move, on the money. Show off. <laughs> Look, to me, just enjoy the pro days for what they are. 
It's fun. When you go watch somebody hit a golf ball a million miles, it's fun. When there you go is. watch a shooter shoot, it's fun. And when you watch a quarterback make this throw going to his left, it's, it's fun. fun. Enjoy it. Yeah, I'm not in on the narrative that the, uh, you know, well, there's no defense out there, you know, there's no rush, you know, there's no defender. I mean, come on. Like, let's, under, let's, let's understand what this is and let's use it in the evaluation process for what it is. If it didn't matter, they wouldn't, wouldn't go. Okay? Exactly. They right. wouldn't go. They'd be having this workout in an empty, in an empty facility. Fields again downfield that one in the air all the way down to the four yard line and then into the end zone Aditi Kinkawala with us live from Columbus Aditi what do you have okay so just before that throw that obviously got you so excited you saw him go off script and get tight end Luke Farrell to rerun a route the reason he wanted him to rerun the route is that the last time he threw a little bit behind him and he wanted to nail it this is how competitive this kid is. You're watching him smile right now. Ryan Day and John Beck have both said to me, he's amped up today. One of the things about Justin Fields is how level he is, how even he is, how cool he always is. There's definitely a little bit of a pep in his step as we say that. And you're getting a sense, as I talk to several of the scouts out here, that they're seeing some more of his personality than they really have. And as for reviews, basically, DJ, everybody, is in agreement with you with, of course, the note that the off-platform...